now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God give to you his peace in your going out and in your coming in, in your lying down and in your rising up, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears, until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawn. Let's do your dance. Does he like, does he like men or... <laughs> Let's do your dance. Can you do your dance? Keep going. Keep going. I want to see your dance. You have to move around a little bit. Just walk and move around and then I'll start jumping. Oh, really? You go left and right and then he'll do it. Oh, you go left and right? Well, not that. When I came in before, you did a wonderful dance. And I've been looking forward to it all week. Can you go up on your perch? Up on your upper perch? You're not loquacious this morning. Can I get you to talk? That's good. That's what I wanted. Do that some more. Okay. All right, thanks. Do that some more. I like that. What a pretty bird you are. Oh, you're so pretty. Oh, you are so pretty. Can you imagine a blue bird with a white tail? in a yellow yellow top. No, is that white top you've got? You know, last time, folks, he was very active. He went up and down the perch. I wish you'd go up into your other perch and swing. You do that for me? Oh, okay. Okay. Future of radio. Do you remember radio, Greg? When you were born, lovely so, birdie. Yes, he is. Good is his name Berkshire? Burke. Just plain Burke. B R K. B E R K. No, just B R K. Burke. <laughs> you know, there's a joke about that. When I was uh, boys and girls, I think it would be wonderful. For you to know about a career in radio, and this is Mr. Sherman Baldwin, who is kind enough to spend his time with us. Sherman, how did you start out in radio? It really became a, a part of my life through the love of music. Oh, is really? It started, even though I only do talk radio now, uh, it's really been a function of loving music. Really? Yep, I used to spin my father's Don Ho records, and I know I've really <laughs> aged myself, in my bedroom and pretend I was a disc jockey. <laughs> <laughs> what year was that? Uh, probably 1969, yeah. 1970, right around there. I'm going to look over here, Sherman, so you'll be looking at the folks at home. Okay. Yeah. I didn't want, you know, just a side shot. That was what year, you think? 1969. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, 1969, 1970. And then you would believe, believe you were a disc jockey. Yeah, I played as a disc jockey, and then uh, I started asking the local radio station if I could sweep up, if I could wash windows, <laughs> anything to get me closer, because I was so... Um, it's wonderful. Intrigued. That's a good thing, boys and girls. That's a good <laughs> thing, what he said, sweep up, do anything. I was just intrigued with the power of radio. You know, anybody could see it. Yeah, I mean, anybody, excuse me, anybody could <laughs> uh, hear it turning on their radio. And I just was intrigued by that. And uh, it was something that I just kept plugging away at until uh, till I'm here today, some 35 years later. <laughs> and where was your first place that you asked to sweep up? Uh, WGCH, Greenwich, Connecticut. And that was a small little community radio station. And so it was... Um, uh, an opportunity that I just enjoyed and it took me about two years to get on the air and what I did was did weather. Weather? Yes, I did weather on Sunday mornings. And how did you bring that about to get them to let you do weather? Uh, the confidence of, of first being a reliable employee uh, for my sweeping up and all of that. 
Then I would actually manage, um, and I'll never forget this, manage the Motor Racing Network, which was a live show with auto racing that they aired on the program Sunday morning. And all I would do is wait for an out cue. You are listening to MRN, the Motor Racing Network. <laughs> and then I would play the local commercials, and then I would come back. And after I did that for about a year, they said, well, um, could you do weather? <laughs> I said, could I do weather? <laughs> and when I did it the first time, I was like, I've arrived. <laughs> it was like, uh, you know, the biggest rush for me I've ever and had. And you were how old? Uh, 16. 16? Yeah, 16. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. You're still going to high school? I still go to high school. Yeah, was it in Greenwich? Uh, it was in Greenwich. <laughs> and uh, it was just an absolute um, eye-opener for me in terms of I knew what I wanted to do for the rest <laughs> of my life. And really, isn't that wonderful? And then what was the progression from there? Um, then I worked at a number of uh, radio stations. And what you've got to do is be able to be flexible. Uh, initially, the pay is not very good. But my first real break was VIP broadcasting in Mount Kisco, New York. And the reason why, um, I also became a, what they call a stringer for Associated Press. Yeah, stringer. And local what news. would happen, local news that would be of national content, God forbid, whether it was... a. a plane crash or yes. a murder or something horrible like that, they would ask a local stringer to actually provide reports to uh, Associated Press and United Press sure. International. Sure. And the station group, VIP Broadcasting, was owned by um, a, a very, uh, very well-known man in broadcasting of that era called Martin Stone. And Martin Stone was also a newspaper man who dabbled in radio. He was uh, part of the Herald Tribune in New York City and all of that and made his way in the world by experimenting and dabbling in radio and I was uh, his guinea pig, so to speak. And, um, I got an opportunity to be uh, in radio as a news person, uh, covering news events uh, and doing live news broadcasts on his radio stations for uh, Westchester County, New York. Oh, yes. Yes, very, very rich county, a very active county, very advanced, progressive. How old were you? Twenty-two. Really? Just out of college. And where'd you go to college? Uh, University of New England in, in Portland, well, outside of Portland, Maine. Uh -huh. A small college. Then I was, and, and I recommend to anybody who wants to get into uh, uh, radio, is get involved in either your high school and, and or college uh, radio stations absolute critical um, education for you. Uh, you know, you, I was a political science major, people can be communications majors, all that's well and good, but actually microphone time is uh, the most important. Yes, and did you get a disc made of your, of your didn't they have disc or whatever? Uh, well, they had reel-to-reel -reel tapes, <laughs> yes, they did. And, uh, you know, it's interesting when you talk about uh, behind the mic time. Warren Buffett, uh, yeah, Berkshire Warren Hathaway, Buffett, sure. often said that you can't be good at anything unless you've done it for 10,000 hours, minimum. <laughs> I love it. I yeah, love it. and, and uh, <laughs> that was important to me when he said that in terms of my ability to get good at it. You can study it, you can uh, go to school for it, but in radio, like any other thing, and I believe this, uh, you need 10,000 hours behind a microphone before you're any good at it. I believe you, yeah. Greg, you could even stand up and get a better shot. Great. Folks, I got a, a thing I want to tell you about Warren Buffett. Uh, Warren Buffett saw the opportunity in Buffalo, New York to buy the Buffalo Evening News, which dominates western New York. And there was another paper there, the Buffalo Courier Express. And he saw very easily that he could push the courier over the hump and he would have a one newspaper town and turn it into a lot of money and he did that and my husband worked for that newspaper for 27 years and to this day Warren Buffett is paying me a monthly amount. Thank you. <laughs> That's interesting. It is interesting. I met him too, you know, at yeah. several of the Buffalo Evening News parties. Interesting. And so, uh, how long did you stay in Mount Kisco? Uh, till about 1987. Uh, and then I, uh, in a lot of ways, kind of got my first big break, so to speak, is, is I went to a major market, but to Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, Jacksonville, Florida at the time was probably 
55, the 55th largest market. Really? Uh, yep. At the time, it's now 43. Oh, really? Uh, those southern cities have really grown. Uh, but at the time, I think it was 55 or 60, somewhere right in there. But that was a big step up from a small market as well, as, as influenced as Westchester County was. Um, it wasn't the amount of people in terms of the broadcast signal. And my first job in radio in Jacksonville, Florida was a big market. And uh, it was very exciting that way. And it provided, um, it provided experience that I use to this day. In fact, it was start. It was the start of me really getting the talk radio bug, uh, because my news transitioned into almost a long format uh, at the station there in Jacksonville, and it was the first time where I really could uh, expound, as opposed to who, what, when, where, why, and how, which is, you know, the the very important parts of any news broadcast: who, what, when, where, why, and how. That's what you're supposed to do in every story. But now, I had the uh, luxury of saying what I thought as well. So it was who, what, when, where, why, how, and what I thought. <laughs> and that was uh, very liberating for me, and I enjoyed the heck out of it. And that got into your blood. And it got into my blood. How old are you at this time? Uh, probably 27. Yeah. And now I also have four kids at this time. <laughs> and I grew, you know, grew up kind of quickly, so to speak. And uh, it, it was just a, a lovely experience. In fact, I always hold uh, WOKV Jacksonville, Florida in the highest regards uh, because of that early time in radio for me. Tell the boys and girls how you got the job. Uh, begged, <laughs> begged, and more begging. Uh, I, I got it because I was professional, I was reliable, I had a good uh, reference from my previous job in Westchester County. Uh, and, and a good reference and the ability to be a reliable employee in whatever job you do is absolute of paramount importance and can really bring you places uh, if you really uh, develop that kind of reference through an employer. Mm, that's it's very good. Standpoint. And we didn't get how you got the Mount Kisco job. How did you get that? Uh, you know what? It was a friend of the owner of the Greenwich station. Oh. Um, I wanted to do more news and, and it was an opportunity for me to be a, a, a newscaster so to speak, and uh, that's what it came down to. So, yeah, it was it was great. You, know, you were very happy. Yeah. I, I, again, I want to get back to something though. Uh, here we are in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, and uh, Takata High School has an incredible high school radio station. They do. Yeah, and it's heard through all out the city. It's a nice signal, whether it be music, whether it be uh, community-oriented bro oh, programming. That's great. Is absolutely fabulous, and there's my cell phone. It's an absolutely fabulous opportunity uh, for everybody. Uh, so, really, I, I want to emphasize one of the best ways to get into radio Again, yeah, as a career or broadcast journalism or any of that type of thing. Uh, in regular news journalism is to get involved in your high school uh, radio station or your high school newspaper or whatever it is, because that is. Uh, was my first resume entry to be able to do whatever I could for my first job in news. Sure. Is, was, was those I should take also, yes, I should take, in addition to the experience, also the contacts you would make. Yeah, they're, they're invaluable. Um, and, and, and frankly, being able to, for, and I'll give you an example of, <coughs> pardon me, uh, being able to have some tape of you on yeah, the air yeah, yeah. to mm -hmm. give them an, a, a representation of, of of your capabilities is, is invaluable and, and that's hard to do unless you're connected with a high school or college radio station. And then boys and girls I have the really sealer on that if you could bring in a sponsor. <laughs> if you could show that you were sponsored at one time by somebody that paid. Yeah, you, you know that is a good opportunity. Oh that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think that that's how I got my first television show in Pittsfield in, in, as a matter of fact. You're too young. What year were you born? Uh, 59. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. This was in 52. And uh, I wrote a television show called Glendora and Her Picture Party. And it was put on WMGT, Mount Greylock Television. And imagine this, 1952. It was a UHF. It was Channel 74. And poor Leon Podolsky, uh, who financed this and was the entrepreneur, 
he would put up an antenna on Greylock and whoosh, it would go down almost every winter. And that man tried so hard to give Pittsfield its own television station. Well, anyhow, Mr. Geary, who was a sales manager and a Marine, uh, came out of the U.S. Marines, he sold my program to Fairdale Farms. It was a children's program, and he sold it to Fairdale Farms in Vermont. And I learned very early the value of having been sponsored. Money makes the world go round. Yes. Fortunately or unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> then I was able to take the Glendora and a picture party from Pittsfield to Manchester, New Hampshire, where it went from a 15-minute program to a 45-minute program. But why did they buy it? Because it had been sponsored. They wanted anything that would be sponsored. They could make money on And then Milton Bradley bought it. The toy company. Yeah, toy, color crayons, Magic Mary dolls, and uh, they put it on WBZ TV Boston, which of course dominates New England. St to this day. To this day, Westinghouse. I uh, actually uh, worked on WBZ Did Boston, really? the radio station. Oh my goodness, which that's is one a of big the biggest. One. Yeah, that's absolutely. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, I did talk there. Mm -hmm. You did. Yes. I want to come back to that, and then. WRGB, General Electric, Channel 6, connected to Detroit, Albany, and a huge signal, because they were experimental, uh, bought it because it was bought by Milton Bradley. And Mr. Raymond Wellpot, their uh, accountant, you know, General Electric always made managers made out of accountants because they watched the money. They knew how to watch the money. And he says, oh, I saw you. I said, you watch WMGT. In Pittsville, he said, certainly, we have to watch our competition. <laughs> Tell me, uh, uh, let's go back to your progression. Where did you go from Jacksonville? I actually, uh, from Jacksonville, uh, moved back to the Northeast. I'm from the Northeast, then, and I wanted to get home. And actually took a bit of a respite from radio. A young father um, needed to... Um, needed to get my family kind of going a little more. Not to say that radio doesn't pay well. It does do fine. But um, I, I needed to f kind of follow the family footsteps and work for the family business oh. as a way of um, making a way for myself and my family. You know, again, I'm 27 years old. I have four children. So the uh, financial burdens placed upon me um, were higher than most 27 years old people. So I... Um, Got out of radio for about 10 years. My goodness. Yeah. And never, always, every single day woke up and said, I'm going to this job to enable me to get back into radio one day. Sure, so, good for you. And, uh, and about 10 years later, I actually um, took a very difficult road, but much like uh, what you had talked about, is that I actually bought time to air a radio show on WATR Waterbury, Connecticut. Oh, that's a big station. Yeah, and, uh, and and basically said to them, I will buy the time. And then I went and found a sponsor. Oh, good. To make me pay, you know, make offset the cost that I had to pay the radio station to have a show. And as a result of buying that time, it was one hour once a week. Uh, WELI New Haven, Connecticut picked me up for afternoon talk three hours a day, five days a week. What's that? Say that again? Uh, that sounds good. W-E-L-I New Haven mm -hmm. uh, picked me up to do afternoon drive, three to six in the afternoon, five days a week. Oh, good. As a result of hearing me on W-A-T-R in so? Waterbury, Connecticut. Did Correct. that have anything to do with the Waterbury Republican? It was very closely connected with the Waterbury Republican, which is a, a newspaper that's still around to this day. It's a very well thought of newspaper. Absolutely. It was. I don't know. It thing. is. It is still to this day. Um, and then WELI New Haven was a great position, uh, enjoyed it immensely, was there for a long time. What years now? Uh, we're talking now, we're up to 19, boy, now I'm aging much, 1998, 99, oh, really? 2000. And you're how old? Uh, now I'm uh, four, 39, 38 years old. Three hours a day you were on? Three hours a day. And was it music? Or? It was all talk. All talk. Uh, politics, culture, <laughs> pop culture, 
um, topics of interest. Oh, how interesting. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, you really covered the community. Yep, I really covered the community. Uh, and so that was an, a, a great time. And as a result of being on in New Haven, Connecticut, I got picked up by an even larger market, WBZ, in Boston. Woo! So that was a big That's step. That's the biggest in New England. New Haven, Connecticut was about 111 in yes. terms of the market size. Um, Boston is 11 now. It's 11 now, but it was 5 then. That's correct. That's right. And again, a lot of the southern cities have it grown. It was in the top included, 5. You know, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Chicago Philadelphia, Philadelphia, and Boston. Boston. Yeah, there you go. Now it's, it's dropped to 11. It's still a very prominent market. Though. Yes, it is. Uh, and a very important market. I mean, we can see, see this now with the U.S. Senate race to replace the late Senator Ted Kennedy. I mean, the, the, the nation is on Massachusetts and Boston, that market, right now, as we are in the full-fledged debates for the U.S. Senate replacement. It's very what did exciting. you do at WBZ? Uh, talk. You uh, did? Talk, yes. At what time? Uh, at night. That was fabulous. <laughs> From 9 to midnight. Oh, my goodness. Which is great. Which That's is prime time. Well, it's also, it's interesting because um, different day parts are different types of radio shows. In the morning, say 6 to 9 in the morning is a very important day part, but it's the time where people want to hear whether they need an umbrella. That's What's right. the weather going to be? That's right. Is there a traffic snarl yeah. at Hubbard Avenue? Yes, yes. That kind of thing. And uh, afternoon drive is kind of the same thing. Will I get home on time? Yes. That kind of thing. Yes. Um, and so uh, the... You're behind me. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Um, so where are we going to pick that up? We're talking about the day parts. Yeah, so um, um, the morning day parts are those kinds of things. The afternoon drive, they call it, day part, is the same kind of thing. Where am I going to encounter traffic to get home? Uh, that, those types of issues, as well as topics that and are important news, in the news, course, of news course. Headline. The evening is a little more laid back, where you'll take a lot of callers and you'll talk about issues and topics, no, but in a right. long format. Um, you'll spend an hour on a topic, as opposed to six minutes, which is typically what you do during the day, drive time uh, topics. And so you spend an hour on it at night and you'll take a lot of phone calls and you'll dissect an issue a topic and you'll um, tell everybody a lot more detail than you typically would have time for. So it's very different radio, almost more laid back too. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, my afternoon drive show that I do here at Pittsfield is is more like, good afternoon everybody, this <laughs> is drive time on Talk Berkshires. My name is Sherman Baldwin. Currently 58 degrees, cloudy skies coming up, we're going to have. Whereas at night it'd be, good evening everybody. And welcome to late night. This <laughs> is, and it's much more laid back and easy going. We'll be taking. And you your did that on calls. WBZ TV. Correct. And did you ever get a chance to say WBZ TV? No, WBZ Boston, WBZ Springfield. Did you ever get a chance? No, to say I that? did not. It was only BZ Boston. Now, getting back to it, interesting. Um, WBZ is a fifty thousand watt, yeah. what they call clear channel station. Yeah. I don't mean the company clear channel meaning there's no competing WBZ frequencies no. that compete against it. So it, it broadcasts ostensibly, particularly at night, from uh, Montreal, Canada to Wheeling, West Virginia. Sure. I mean, it's a big city. And, and west. And, and west, too, and then way over the fishes yes, in the east in the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. I'd, I'd have fishermen uh, let me know that they were listening to me when they were at George's Banks oh, offshore fishing. Yeah. Uh, so that's a big signal. Oh, it's a big signal. It was the biggest. Yeah. And I knew that, of course, because they were head on to General Electric, Westinghouse was yeah. against General Electric. And at that time there was Philco. Mm -hmm. And at that time there was Dumont. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dumont Broadcasting. Yeah. I worked for a Dumont company. <laughs> the Jacksonville Station was a Dumont station. <laughs> Where'd you go from BZ? Uh, well, then, uh, when I, when I, from there, I um, decided I was about, this is about, three years ago, I decided to, um, my kids were older, they were in college, hmm, I decided that, um, you did a good I, job there. thank you, um, that it was time to do the kind of radio that I loved again. Not that I didn't enjoy what I was doing before, but large markets are very, um, very ratings driven, with Arbitron ratings, which is like Nielsen, people know that from TV. They're very dra ratings driven, and you live 
month by month, ratings book after ratings book. And I said, at 50 years old, I do this because I love it. So I'm going to step off of a big market, and I'm going to go to a place where I can do radio I love at a pace that I enjoy, with always wanting to build your audience, but not always concerned about building an audience. Doing good radio, it's almost back to the days when I started in radio now. So I'm in a smaller market. The money's not nearly as good. But I don't care because I'm doing radio for the love of it, okay, and and I'm doing a style and a type of radio that is important to this community. Um, we're hosting debates for the mayor's race. We've had all the city council members in to talk about why you, they should be elected. You hosted that thing at the Crown Plaza where there were ten ten mayoral candidates. That's wow. correct. Uh, hosted and moderated. Um, I did the 20th Congressional District debates in New York. They asked me to do those, which oh, were aired live on TV. We have made an offer to all five Senate candidates to have a debate here <laughs> in the Berkshires. And cool. we've got four of the five to say okay. And we have suspect that the fifth will say okay. Um, so we're, we'll likely be hosting U.S. Senate debates for this uh, the replacement for the late oh, Senator Oh, good. Kennedy. Your love is still there, isn't it? Yeah, so I, I'm doing the kind of radio at a pace and at a um, style that's much like when I first started. Yeah. So it's kind of how uh, it's the, the circle of life of radio, <laughs> so to speak. I'm, I'm back to kind of where I started, but I am very, very happy. Yeah, it's good. That's, yeah. that's Happiness is worth everything, sure more is. than money. Yeah. I was wondering, we, you know, Greg and I thought those debates with the ten mayoral candidates were very exciting, and we got footage of it, and we put it all over my 74 TV stations, and we put it on the YouTube, but I was aghast that the local TV station didn't cable cast that. Um, well, they actually did. They, they, they actually had, but they had a single camera, not a lot of it. But they actually did put it on, but surely not uh, any local TV station, uh, public access station, has uh, very limited resources. And they were spread really thin. Oh, do it again. Come on, honey. You're scared, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, I don't want to talk to you if you're scared. I love you, Bertie. Bye-bye. Um, he, so I'd everybody talks to him, so I don't know why he's like that. But. 